Hello, everybody, and welcome to Gene's Reviews. Reviews from a regular day, where I do trailer reactions, I react to YouTube videos, I review YouTube channels, occasionally I'll review a movie, but really, I just do whatever the hell I want. The ghost of a serial killer lurks within this abandoned farmhouse. As a ghost hunter who predominantly collects EVPs, this case tipped the scales in many ways for me. I usually follow guides created by other paranormal investigators, but this case seemed to fall right into my lap, or so it seemed. Traveling on my way to another haunted location, my spidey senses went off as I passed a rundown farmhouse. When I reversed and stopped in front of the property, I could almost hear screams and growls in my head. Strangely enough, there were no signs blocking the entrance to the property, so I grabbed my equipment and went in. I found it odd that the majority of the trees and plants surrounding the old house were either dead or dying. The house itself also looked like it was decaying from the inside out, along with the surrounding buildings and sheds. As I crept up to the front porch, I saw that it was crumbling around the concrete steps that led up to the front door. Stepping slowly and lightly, I noticed the cracks in the concrete and then the old boards nailed across the door. The disembodied voices started before I even got into the house. I switched one of my EVP recorders on, then I pulled on the boards finding them flimsy and easy to rip down. The door opened on its own, creepy enough, but I had to remember that the dangers were more than just structural. I walked slowly, testing the floorboards as I went, but the familiar pricking of my hairs and the chills hit me fast. Surprisingly, the center of the house was sturdy, so I walked freely into the kitchen, and then froze in my tracks. A woman was slumped on the floor under the sink with a large knife stuck in her chest and trickling blood. I was able to see through her and I realized I was in the middle of a residual haunting. But then she looked up. The pain in her face was horrible but she managed to raise her hand and point upwards. Then she screamed. I looked around, but no one was there, so I turned back as I trembled in fear to see the woman standing up, still screaming, and pointed up again. Her head began to twitch and shake uncontrollably with her mouth wide open. I knew that I had to investigate, even though I was nearly peeing in my pants, so I went out and ran up the stairs. When I got to the top, I heard the boards behind me creaking with slow footsteps. I spun around, but nobody was there. I felt like I was being stalked, but I had to push on, going, it, going to the bedroom at the front of the crumbling house. Again, the door opened on its own, making my flesh crawl. Then I saw a small boy laying in a pool of his own blood. I couldn't help the tears falling down my face, but I was distracted by a nasty growl close to my right ear. Angry now, I turned around and yelled, Who are you? But I didn't get a response, so I looked back at the little boy. He lifted his head and pointed to the back of the house. My head was spinning as I didn't know what to do. Then the boy sat up and yelled, in his tiny voice, help us, while he continued to point emphatically and cry. I ran over to the room on the other side, feeling like someone was controlling me while a chill ran through my body. When I got to the room, that door opened violently this time, smashing against the wall while the handle rattled. A teenage girl was flung across the old bed with slashes 
all over her body. A river of blood ran under the bed. Then I heard menacing laughter in the distance, which fueled my anger. The girl slowly sat up and pointed to the left. Her pretty face was littered with gashes and bruises. I was weeping angry tears for this ghostly family who had obviously been viciously attacked by a sadistic killer. I could still hear the screams from the mother and the little boy along with the gurgling from the girl on the bed. It was clear that she had her throat slashed but she was trying to speak as she pointed to the back of the house. Feeling that I might find the killer there, it, it took me some time to build up the nerve to keep moving. I was annoyed with myself for stepping into this nightmare without backup as I'd never faced anything like it before. Then I remembered my video camera, so I activated it and pointed it all over the place while I continued on my way. The gurgling, crying, and screaming went on as I crept down the landing to the room at the back, shivering in fear. Before I even got to the room, I heard the slow creaking of the door, which made me shudder and move even slower. My body shook as I made it to the door where I expected to face the killer responsible for the death of this family. Instead, I saw a grown man in a chair with an axe deep in his head. There was a pool of blood under the chair. Somehow I knew that this was the father and that he couldn't speak but he slowly lifted his hand and began to point. A chill swept through my soul as I realized that his finger was pointing directly at me. Was I the killer? As I thought that, the father pointed more emphatically at me and the screams and noises from his family increased. While I stood there dumbstruck, wondering what he meant, I felt a blast of evil hit my back, freezing my body. Then a putrid stench wafted over me and the father continued to point anxiously to the space behind me. Finally, I was able to turn around as an unholy growling began to filter through the screams of the whole family. This time I did pee my pants as I realized that I was face to face with the most evil entity I had ever encountered. Keep in mind, but until that day, I had only ever captured voices on my EVP recorder. I'd never seen a ghost. Now I was only centimeters away from a murderous monster who had slaughtered an innocent family in cold blood. At first I had no idea what I had to do, and it was obvious that the sinister specter found this fact amusing. He looked like a big gorilla of a man who had escaped an insane asylum with huge black eyes and an awful sneer. Then I remembered that I had a mini Bible on my keychain, which my mother had given me before she passed away. I whipped my keys out and with trembling fingers I flipped the Bible open and shoved it in his ghostly face. It was all I could think of, but it worked. I yelled, Leave them alone! Go to hell where you belong! He screamed like a demon splashed with holy water. As I raged along with the family's screams, he disappeared. I turned around and the father was gone. When I raced through the house, I saw that the, the whole family was gone. The house was now empty, but free from evil. When I got back in my car, I finally broke down and cried happy tears. I wasn't even mad when I got back home and discovered that my equipment had malfunctioned with no evidence. Thank you everybody. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hashtag mean gene, all that fun stuff. And if you like this video, tell all your friends, leave a comment down below. And if you didn't like it, then just shut up. And I will see you next time.